This video is about sensory receptor and nerve impulse. And at the end of it, the student will be able to specify the structures responsible for reception of stimulation, list some types of stimulations and their corresponding receptors, and finally to explain how the nerve message is coded. Experimentally, it is possible to stimulate each point of a neuron or of an isolated nerve to obtain a nerve impulse. But in vivo, the genesis of these impulses is done by specialized neuron structures, the receptors. So, what are receptors and how a nerve impulse is triggered by these receptors? First, how can we define the receptors? They are structures or organs of the body able to transform the energy of the stimulus into action potential. Uh, and we will see later how does the receptor transform this energy into action potential. Let's see now the different types of receptors and the different types of stimuli. First, what about the mechanical stimulations like touch, pressure, and stretching? The receptors able to detect mechanical stimulations are called mechanoreceptors. Where do we find mechanoreceptors? In the skin for touch and pressure, in the vessels for pressure, and in the muscles for stretching. Now, if the stimulus is about temperature variation, the receptors are called thermoreceptors and we can find them in the skin and the tongue. If the stimulus is the light, the receptors are the photoreceptors and we find them in the eye. If the stimulus causes pain, pain stimulation, like high pressure or temperature that can be exerted on the skin, the receptors of pain are called nociceptors and we can find them example in the skin. And finally, if the stimulus is about chemical substances, transported molecules, the receptors are called chemoreceptors and we find them in the tongue for taste and in the nose for odors. Let's see now how the receptor generates action potentials upon stimulation. First, this is the Pacini corpuscle, which is a structure in the skin and sensitive to pressure. On this receptor, we exert three supraliminal intensities, which means three pressures that are above the threshold of stimulation. And we record the nerve message generated by this receptor and passing through the sensory nerve fiber attached to this receptor. This is the sensory nerve fiber. The oscilloscope shows the obtained results. Notice that the messages are recorded during the same period of time. Let's see. We exert first a weak pressure. We obtain two action potentials of same amplitude. Moderate pressure triggers 4 AP of same amplitude and the strong pressure triggers 6 action potentials of same amplitude. And the amplitude of the AP is the same in the three messages. So, what's the difference between the three messages? To what the nerve center that will receive these messages refers 
to distinguish between the three exerted pressures. In fact, the more the exerted pressure is higher, the more the generated action potentials are frequent. Then, to distinguish between different pressures, the nerve center refers to how many AP arrive during a specific period of time. What do we call this? We call it frequency of action potential. But why the frequency of action potentials vary with the variation of the intensity of stimulation? This document shows an experiment during which we stimulate the Pacini corpuscle with increasing pressures. Using different oscilloscopes, we measure the receptor potential using electrode R1, the generating potential, which is the nerve message just at its exit from the receptor using R2, and the nerve message passing through the nerve fiber using the electrode R3. And these are the obtained results. When we apply a pressure of 0.8 gram per centimeter square, the receptor potential increases, but it doesn't reach the threshold of depolarization of the receptor. And in this case, this receptor is unable to generate any action potential. However, when we apply a pressure of 2 gram per centimeter square, the receptor potential increases and exceeds the threshold of depolarization of the receptor. And in this case, the corpuscle is able to generate many action potentials that are 6 AP in this case. While in the third case, we apply a pressure of around 3 gram per centimeter square. And as we see, the membrane, pot uh, the receptor potential increases more and it becomes able to generate more action potentials that are 13 AP due to 3 gram per centimeter square of pressure. So, the more the intensity of stimulation is higher, the more the receptor potential is higher, and the more the number of AP generated is higher. Therefore, in a nerve fiber, the intensity of stimulation or the nerve message is coded by modulation of frequency of action potential.